simply because it is good. Blessed are you, Adonai, who gave us the Torah of truth. Remain standing as we read from the scriptures. We'll be reading from um, <clears throat> the Torah, Deuteronomy 29, verses uh, 9 through 12. Then we'll be reading from Isaiah, the half Torah, the prophets, Isaiah 27, 12 through 13. And then from 2 Thessalonians in the Brit Kadashah, chapter 2, verses 13 through 15. So Deuteronomy 29, 9 through 12. Today you are standing, all of you, before Adonai your God, your heads, your tribes, your leaders, your officers, all the men of Israel, along with your little ones, your wives, your foreigners here with you in your camp, from the one who chops your wood to the one who draws your water. The purpose is that you should enter into the covenant of Adonai your God, and unto his oath, which Adonai your God is making with you today, so that he can establish you today for himself as a people, and so that for you he will be God. As he said to you, and as he swore to your ancestors, to Abraham, Isaac, and Yaakov. <laughs> Vashekem ship takem, Zeknekem, Vashor Rekem, Ko Yishirael, Tapkem, Nish Yekem, Vikarek, Ashe, Bikareb, Mashineyak Hakotet, Et Seyak, Et Shoeb, Neyomeyak, Lerak, Bedra, Adonai, Layak, Alato, Ashe, Adonai, Lokayak, Korech, Imak Hayom, El Maan, Lakim, Otak Hayom, Lam, Wahu Yihe, Laak Adonai, Hashe, Bedrak, Vikashe, Nishpa, La Teyak, La Abraham, Betiyak, La Yaakov. Isaiah 27, verses 12 and 13. On that day, Adonai will beat out the grain between the Euphrates River and the Vadi of Egypt, and you will be gathered one by one, people of Israel. And on that day, a great shofar will sound. Those lost in the land of Ashur will come, also those scattered through the land of Egypt, and they will worship Adonai on the holy mountain in Ayushalayim. Vichaya Bayom Hahu Hakob Adonai, Mishbolet Hanahar et Nahal Misraim, Vaet Nisutu, Lechot, Vahe Bene Israel, Vichaya Bayom Nahu Yitab, Yisfair Kakol, Ubauha Bim Baret Asher, Venetahim Beret Misraim, Vichin Tahu, Adonai Beha Hakov Bi, Yerushalam. Second Thessalonians chapter two, thirteen through fifteen. But we have to keep thanking God for you always, brothers whom the Lord loves, because God chose you as first fruits for deliverance by giving you the holiness that has its origin in the spirit and the faithfulness that has its origin in the truth. He called you to this through our good news so that you could have the glory of our Lord Yeshua, the Messiah. Therefore, brothers, stand firm and hold to the traditions you were taught by us, whether we spoke them or wrote them. In a letter. Abau anachnu hayabim el chadot tamid adonai, ba burkem achai habibe ha don, ashe me bet hela, bahar bakem he adonai, lishua bikudasa, hauruach ube ume hame, lazot hara et kem, bisora tenu, al halat kadab adenu, hashenu hamashiak, lakem achai imdu, vhaziku badoet. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who gave us the Torah of truth, set everlasting life in our midst, and blessed art thou, O Lord our God, the giver of the Torah. Amen. You may be seated <laughs> in his presence. He gets going, doesn't he? Hallelujah. <laughs> Deuteronomy chapter 29 is where we're taking the Torah portion, of course. I just read it to you, verses 9 through 12. Actually, the Torah portion goes from chapter 29, verse 9, <clears throat> clear through chapter 30, verse 20. It is Netzavim, or you are standing. You know, there's a lot of writings that are um, have been found, a lot of writings that probably you're not even familiar with, nor was I familiar with, but there is a 
uh, writings, um, um, we were trying to figure out how to say it. It's uh, D-I-D-A-C-H-E. Did anyone know how to pronounce that? D-I-D-A-C-H-E. The didac? Okay, well, the didac is a writing of the apostles. When <coughs> they were gathered together, the writings are actually older than Paul's writings. And so I want to just quote from these writings because it goes along with the, the Torah portion. The writing is found in the didach of uh, chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. It says, there are two ways, one of life, one of death. And there is a great difference between the two ways. The way of life is this. First, you shall love Elohim who made you. And second, you are to love your neighbor as yourself and do not do to another what you would not want done to you. Sound familiar? Well, when I was looking at that and then I was looking at the Torah portion, I've come to the realization, and we've always known it, that there are basically <clears throat> our lives consist of choices, correct? You got up this morning and decided what to wear. You got up this morning and decided what to eat. You got up this morning and decided when you were going to leave the house and when you would arrive here. You got up this morning and you make a lot of choices. So our life is about a lot of choices. You choose what kind of uh, vocation you're going to have, what kind of profession you decide to do. You have made a decision of who you're going to marry or who you already did marry and how many children you're going to have. Or whoops, maybe you didn't decide that. It just was an accident. But either way, you have choices. But really, in reality, there are really just two choices that you make on a daily basis. And those two choices is either life or death. Whatever avenue, whatever choices you make will either pr will produce life or it will produce death. So it really is as simple as that. How many know sometimes we make life too hard? How many know that we cause our own drama sometimes? Hello? Because we choose the wrong direction. We choose the path either of life. <clears throat> which can cause direct uh, uh, drama. Or we can choose the life or the path of death, which causes more drama. Because at least when you choose the path of life and have drama, you have something to look forward to, right? But if you choose the other path, which causes drama and death, you have nothing to look forward to. So we have these two choices in our life. And this <clears throat> Torah portion really is about choices. When we look at Deuteronomy chapter 29 and we look at the, verse, the first verse that I read, and if you have you know, the complete Jewish Bible, it's very nice. It's, it tells you where the Torah portion begins and where it ends and, and some dif different scriptures that go along with it. But the first one, that first verse says, Today you are standing, all of you, before Adonai your God, your heads, your tribes, your leaders, your officers, all the men of Israel. And then it goes on and on. But I want to look at just those first couple words that says, Today you are what? Standing. Who is standing? <clears throat> all of us are standing. You know, it begins with Atim Nisavim, which means you are standing. All of you here today are standing. When I was preaching on Lana Judah 2 last night, uh, and, and we were reading the Torah portion as well as this morning reading the Torah portion, it was like God was speaking to you because we all were standing. Every, every male, every female, every child, every one of us should have been standing when the Torah portion is read. And so when God was speaking, today you are standing, it's just like he's speaking to you today. All of you <coughs> standing, all of you before Adonai your God. You do realize you're before Adonai your God today. Not me, but him. I am his mouthpiece today. I am, I am that which is going to deliver what I, what I feel the Spirit of God, the Ruach HaKadosh has given me to speak. It's from the Torah portion, which means it's nothing I made up. It's already written. I, all I got to do is take it and articulate it the way that he wants me to say it to you. So he is speaking to you today. You are here. This is the word of Adonai to you today, all of you, not just some of you, not just the men, not just the women, not just the children. You know how we do sometimes, boy, that word was for sister or that word was for brother or sometimes when we don't know or we can't look around, they're not here. Oh, they missed a word. That was for them. Guess what? If you're here today, the word is for you. 
If you were here on Wednesday, we've been talking about the tabernacle. And I, I find it very interesting because the Spirit of God, the Ruach, always, always meshes everything together. And in this, this uh, Wednesday, we talked about boards and sockets. And we talked about what in Hebrew <coughs> the boards meant. The boards that were going to stand upright. The boards that were going to stand side by side. And it's interesting that this Torah portion is about standing. So God is trying to tell us something, isn't he? In, in the Hebrew, in, in the tabernacle, I said it was the Mishlabat Isha uh, El Echota, which means these boards will be equally <coughs> connected, each one to its sister, is what the scripture says when it comes to the tabernacle. Which is important when I read the scripture, because Netzarim <coughs> in Hebrew means standing firm. But it means more than just standing firm because there's a connection, and the connection is all of you. You know, uh, Yahweh, if it was just about standing, would have said, today you are standing. Then he would have skipped everything, and he would have said, the purpose that you should enter into the covenant of Adonai, he would have skipped. But he doesn't skip. He wants you to know who is standing. He wants you to know who is standing beside you. He wants you to know who the word is for. It's not an individual word. It's a corporate word. It's not just a word for you, though it can be. It's a word for you as an assembly, as a body, as a family, as a kahila, as a, as a kahol, as, as, as the ecclesia, as the church, as a congregation. Whatever you want to call us, it is for us. This verse teaches us that our standing firm is conditional upon it being all of you standing together. Which means in order for me to stand firm, I need someone <clears throat> equally connected to me. Who is my sister slash brother. Who will stand with me on my right side, on my left side. Then someone else on the left side and the right side. Someone else until finally I am able to stand firm because I am connected to someone who is also standing firm. And if I am standing without a connection, then when the wind comes or when the storm comes, I can easily be toppled. I can easily go to one spot to another spot, easily motivated, easily pulled away, uh, blown around by every wind of doctrine. And the only thing that what God is saying to us, what, what Adonai is saying to us, as you head to the promised land and as you are going to the destiny that God has for you, know this, that you are standing. All of you are standing. Each of us, from the highest to the lowest, has our part to play and our own potential to fulfill. Whether you just came in, whether you came in 20 years ago, whether you are one of the faithful that have been here for all 30 years that we're going to celebrate, you have a part to play. <clears throat> you have the potential, something within this house to fulfill. Sometimes we forget it along the way. But you're not here for no reason. God didn't call you for no reason. God didn't birth Lana Judah for no reason. He didn't birth it just because he gave me a job. He didn't say, poor Jeff, i got to get him something. i got to get him something to do. There's a reason why he chose this place. I said last night, there's a reason why he chose that place. There's a reason why he chose me. There's a reason why he chose you. And one of the reasons is, is that we were able to stand, all of us together, to fulfill the will and purpose of God in our lives. We all have a higher calling, <clears throat> no matter where you are. And so he goes and he says, listen, you are all standing, all of you, before Adonai, your God. And then he breaks it down. And how, here's how he breaks it down. Your heads, your tribes, your leaders, your officers, and all the men of Israel. He starts from the head and he works his way down. He continues on, along with your little ones and your wives and your foreigners here with you in your camp. From the one who chops your wood to the one who draws your water. He's trying to tell us something, isn't he? He's trying to tell us no matter how high you think you are and what position you carry or what things you do that seems not to be <clears throat> important or even something that would be e e e exalted, it's still that you all are standing before him. We need every single one of us standing connected as brothers and sisters in order to stand in this last day. The Talmud's Ethics of the Fathers tells us, <clears throat> there's a question, he says, who is rich? And the answer is, he who is happy with his lot. Which means I'm satisfied. In whatever state I am, I am content. It might not be the most... <clears throat> 
uh, happiest moment of my life, I'm still content. Because we have ups and we have downs. We have mountains and we have valleys. But I find myself that I am rich. And I am rich because I have him. And I am rich because I have you. And I am rich because I'm able to stand firm. Why? Because I'm connected to someone on my right and someone on my left. And the word of God, the power of God, Yeshua himself holds me up. But he uses you and, and, and each one of us to hold each other up. That's why he said in the last day, <clears throat> what's going to happen? There will be a forsaking of the assembly. And the reason why there will be a forsaking of the assembly is because of the attitude and because of the thinking processes. And it's because of the attack of the enemy because the enemy knows if he can separate and divide, he can conquer and kill. So he'll use things, set up things in order for you to start pulling away and shifting away. And what happens, it's like dominoes. Anyone ever play dominoes? You hit one and they all fall down. Rather than worrying about why we are not standing in someone else's shoes, we always like to be in someone else's shoes. Oh, I wish I was them, or I wish I was that one, or <clears throat> I wish I had their money, and I wish I had that car, and I wish I had that house. Instead of worrying about all those things, because in this, in this scripture, you don't find that the head was struggling against the tribe and the tribe was struggling against the head and the leader was struggling against the officer and the officer wanted to be the head and the, the woman wanted to be the man, the man wanted to be the woman and the little one wanted to be a daughter and, and the, <clears throat> the one who's chopping wood wanted to draw water and the one who's drawing water wanted to be a head. You don't see that struggle. Everyone understood. Because they knew that everything they did was significant. What I love about Yeshua is that when he looks down, whether you're cleaning the bathroom or preaching the word of God, he doesn't see you in those capacities. He sees you as one who's faithful. That's it. So what is our task? Our task is very simple. And, and I want you to write this down because this is something you need to hold on to. It's something that you need to, to think about. It's something that you need to put on your refrigerator and put in your bathroom mirror. It's something that you need to put in your Bible so you can read to it and, and for it from <clears throat> uh, time to time. It's something that maybe you need to put in your car when you're not driving to read. Our task is this, is to fulfill our potential. Listen to me. At the level we are at. How many know we're at a level? How many know you can go higher? <clears throat> but how many know you can't go higher unless, you have to, unless you're at the level you are, correct? You can't go from one to five. You have to go from one to two to two to three to three to four to four to five. Right? So it says you have to fulfill your potential at the level that you are at. In the situation where we are now. How many would like just God to take away the situation that we are now so we can just be in a better place? But what does he say? <clears throat> you have to be able to fulfill the potential in the situation where we are now. Knowing that even if it may seem insignificant, each of us contributes on our own level and in our own way to the greater picture. Who is Lana Judah? Lana Judah is not me. Who is Lana Judah? Lana Judah is not the worship team. Who is Lana Judah? Lana Judah is not the deacons. Who is Lana Judah? Lana Judah is not the elders. Who is Lana Judah? Lana Judah is all of us standing <coughs> as uh, <coughs> equally connected as sisters and brothers, which enables us to stand firm. Understanding your contribution and understanding your significance, whether you are a little one, whether you are a child, whether you are an adult. That's why Yeshua said, suffer not the little children to come to me, because when I look at them, they're not something that can be discarded because they are still part of this kingdom. So in order to stand firm as a nation, in order to stand firm as an assembly, in order to stand firm, we need the contribution of each person on every level. I need you. <clears throat> we need each other. We need your significance. We need your gifting, your talent, your ability. We need your presence. We need your commitment to, to this house. We need your commitment to each other. If we're going to stand firm in this last day, we need to be upright, standing, connected equally. So that when the wind of different doctrines come and when the enemy comes, <clears throat> we will not be moved. 
You know, 2 Thessalonians 2, 13 through 15, I read it to you. Let's read it again. But we have to keep thanking God for you always, brothers, whom the Lord loves, because God chose you as first fruits for the deliverance by giving you the holiness that has its origin in the Spirit and the faithfulness that has its origin in the truth, which means you are born again by Spirit, but you are wrapped in righteousness by word. He called you to this through our good news so that you could have the glory of our Lord Yeshua, the Messiah. Therefore, brothers, say it with me. Therefore, brothers, say it again. Say it a little stronger. And hold to the traditions you were taught by us, whether we spoke them or wrote them in a letter. The thing that we should be fighting for, the thing that should make us is that we stand firm, that we hold on to everything that Genesis through Revelation says, that we hold on to every tradition, that we hold on to every festival, and hold on to our Sabbath, and hold on <clears throat> to the commandments, and hold on to everything that connects us to Yeshua. We need to hold on. Having done all to stand, we need to what? Stand some more. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 18, very familiar to us. Finally, grow powerful in union with the Lord, in union with His mighty strength. Who's He talking talking to who was he talking to in second thessalonians he's talking to the house he's talking to the gehila he's talking to the kahal he's talking to the assembly yes you can take it and apply it individually but he's not talking to you individually he's talking to you as a house he's talking to you as an assembly he said listen to me the thessalonians listen to what i have to say to you listen to me you ephesians Grow powerful in union with the Lord. Who? All of us in union. There's strength in numbers. One will chase and two will chase. <clears throat> Listen, don't worry about chasing anyone until you worry about standing with someone. Right? Use all the armor and weaponry that God provides so that you will be able to stand against the deceptive tactics of the adversary. For we are not struggling against human beings, but against the rulers and authorities and cosmic powers governing this darkness against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realm. Who's he talking to? The body. That as we are equally connected, standing side by side, we need to put the weapons of the warfare in our, in our hands so that we can not only protect us, that I protect the one to my left and protect the one to my right, that I look down and protect the body, that I protect the, <clears throat> the union that we have because power comes from unity. So take up every piece of war equipment God provides so that when the evil day comes, is it here? When does the evil day come? Every single day of our lives sometimes, doesn't it? As soon as you wake up, here it came. You will be able to resist, and when the battle is won, not if the battle is won, not I hope that the battle is won. What he's saying is if you put into operation as a body, then guess what? <clears throat> you will win the body will win the, the 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 assembly will win you'll be able to go in as the children of israel into your promised land he didn't just call moses to the promised land he called the people into the promised land you will still be standing the power of being equally connected is that if I falter and faint, someone's there to pick me. <clears throat> someone's there to grab me. Someone's there to hold me. Right? But if I'm all by myself and I stumble, I fall. So God has given us some weaponry. God has given us some stuff. Therefore what? Therefore what? Therefore what? Where is your position? <clears throat> in the corner, somewhere else where you're at, at home, somewhere by yourself, in a mountain praying. No, where's the position he's talking about? Stand where? Equally connected in the body. 
understanding that you have something significant and the potential that you have to offer, that you're not here. This is not a vacation time where you just come to take notes. This is not a retreat. This is a family. This is an assembly. This is not a vacation for you. This is where you come and connect and, <clears throat> and reconnect and hold on to and fight for and, and bring your weapons of war. This is a place where you're not coming in and going out. This is a place where you cause your roots to stand and you grab a hold of the brother to your left and your sister or your, or your brother to the right and you hold on until the end. That's a good place for amen. But I'll take a hallelujah from everyone. Have the belt of truth buckled around your waist. Put on the righteousness for a breastplate. Wear on your feet the readiness that comes from the good news of Shalom. Always carry the shield of trust with which you will be able to extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. And take the helmet of deliverance along with the sword given by the Spirit. That is the word of God as you pray at all times with all kinds of prayers. Requ request in the Spirit vigilantly and persistently for all God's people. We have some army people in here. When you're called to go into the field, if you're ever called to go to Afghanistan or different places, do, when you arrive, are you the only one there? Yeah, they just say, hey, I call on you into battle. And <clears throat> you get on the plane, you kind of notice that it's just you and the pilot, and you kind of figure out what's going on. <laughs> and you get off the plane, and there they are. There's the enemy, and there you are. And the pilot just <laughs> heads on out. How many know when you joined the army, you knew you joined an army? Correct? That you knew at least when you got over there, there'd be more than you. Right? <clears throat> that there would be troops, that there would be a company, that there would be a group of people that are fighting. When they say, take that line, it doesn't mean you go take the line. It means we go take the line. Right? Oh, I've joined the army, but I really would just like to be alone in my tent. And I'd like for you to send me out from time to time by myself. I work well with me. No, because the first bullet is taking you out. And if you got wounded someplace, there's no one to pick you up, no one to call for you. You're there by yourself. You understand that in the last day, this is why he says, <clears throat> don't forsake, come together, stand and understand the tabernacle. The tabernacle works and the and the curtains fall and and are held up and the Ark of the Covenant and the and the holy place. They all work because there are boards that are standing equally connected to each other. We need the contribution of each person on every level. There's a rabbi, his name was Rabbi Le, uh, Levin, and he's <coughs> considered the righteousness, uh, righteous man from Jerusalem. And he went to the doctor because his wife had an ailment, and he went to the doctor, and he informed the doctor, he said, my wife's leg is hurting us. This idea applies to all of us. See, <coughs> so Teresa... His blood pressure is a little high, so she goes to the hospital. So we just, ah, hit the banda. No, if she's hurting, we're hurting. If her blood pressure is high, our blood pressure is high. <coughs> if you're sick, I'm sick. If you're going through something, I'm going through something. That's a really hard concept for us because what you're going through is what you're going through. Leave me alone. I'm going through my own stuff. But you know what? You're not going through your own stuff because what? You are equally connected to someone standing beside you so that we, if you have a fever, I feel your fever. <coughs> if you have a cold, I sense your cold. So I'm going to have to turn this way <laughs> so you don't give me your cold. But we're missing that today, aren't we? Because we're growing up in a society that says all about me, all about me, all about me. It has crept into our families because now children is not about the family anymore. Do you remember when you used to work for the family and take care of the family and everything was evolved around the family? Now it's just about you and your own position and what you want and what you want for life. And this is who I want. This is when, you, when you even go to God, you pray, God, help me, help me, not help us. 
When a person suffers, <clears throat> another feels the pain, even at a distance. When, the, when, the, when J- uh, uh, Israel is suffering, we should feel that suffering. We should know what it is to feel that suffering. When someone's attacking a Jewish brother, we should feel it. When someone is beheading one of our Christian brothers, if it's, I, we should understand it. We should feel it. Not just to read about it. Not just say, oh, me, oh, my. Oh, I need to pray for them. But we should feel the, the impact of it, the brunt of it, the pain of it. Because we're standing connected equally no matter the distance this affects us but the enemy has set us up and how he set us up is that he gets us away from the torah and the torah really from genesis to revelation uh, even if you just study the it's really about family genesis the the first word of genesis is better Asia food. That's all it does. We should feel it. We should understand it. We're part of it. There is no us and them. Because <clears throat> anything that undermines the very fabric of this community has an effect on all of us, whether we are directly involved or not. Doctor, my wife's leg is hurting us. Well, that's really their problem. It's not my problem. They'll have to work that out on their own. We missed it. We don't know, get it. (coughs) Each person needs to be intact in order for us to achieve our communal potential. Line of Judah 1 and Line of Judah 2 has communal potential. We have the opportunity to reach this community. We have an opportunity to reach the world. We're on the internet. We have the opportunity to reach people. Sometimes when we, when we go and we have, we've viewed, <coughs> people in Brazil are watching us. People in Russia are watching us. Other people have been watching us. Other people come because they've watched us. Don't you understand that when we are intact, there is a potential in this house, but it can only come to completion if we all understand our potential and our place and become intact within this community so that God can do something. Deuteronomy chapter 29, look at uh, verse 9. I'm going to break this down for you because the verse says this. (coughs) Go to the next one. Go to the slide. Today you are standing, today all of you, to enter into the covenant. Let me break that down. Standing condotes victory. When you are victorious, you stand. I, I, I said if, if you're at a, 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 a race and someone that you know is going across the finish line, what do you do? You stand. Ah! When your children graduated, what did you do? Oh, thank God. I mean, but you're standing thanking God. Oh, thank God. Right? If you're sitting down and someone that you haven't seen for months comes in the room, what do you do? You stand. <clears throat> you are delighted. So what is, what is Yahweh saying? Today you are standing. Today you are in victory. Who's in victory? All of you. <clears throat> in this day of the animal ju- uh, of, of day of judgment, you are in victory. All of you means the entire nation as one. So when your child walks across the platform and gets a diploma, who should stand? All of us should stand. When someone has just come home from a long haul and you haven't seen him for, who should stand? <clears throat> All of us should stand. I know it's just because we've been traveling for a long time, so this is not to make you do this, but how many remember when we used to go to mission trips uh, 30 years ago, 25 years ago, 20 years ago? Does anyone remember what used to happen? When we were leaving, everybody came, right? Oh, hallelujah, we love you, we pray for you, glory, glory. They, we used to ride out, and people would be like, and do you remember when we used to come home, whatever, what happened? Oh, there was a band where everybody went, <laughs> and we were like, ah. 
your wives, your children, grandchildren, your pet came. Everyone came. Now we go and they just say, when are you leaving? Oh, okay, I'm praying for you. And then when you get back and you go by the church, it's like crickets. Kick, 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 kick. <laughs> and you get back to church on Wednesday and say, oh, you're back already. <clears throat> Some will say, oh, you're going. When'd you go? How long did you stay? <laughs> See, when we go on the mission trip, who goes on the mission trip? You all go on the mission trip. And when we come home, who came home? We all came home. <clears throat> we can't lose that. We have to grab a hold of that. We have to get a part of that. And that, that, that means when someone's gone, you say, oh, let me give you my time. Let me give you your money. How can I help this? We used to have people come and help us pack. <laughs> but still, you made an effort. <laughs> Standing. Standing, equally connected, side by side. <clears throat> standing today, where? All of you. Look what it says. You're standing today, all of you, for what reason? Write this down, even though it's just going to make you mad, okay? To enter into a covenant. What is to enter into a covenant? It refers to the fact that every individual pledges responsibility to one another. I guess they didn't hear it because they <coughs> they zoned out. Let me let me read that again. It refers to the fact that every individual pledges responsibility to one another. It's really still hard to swallow, isn't it? It's like one of those big <laughs> big pills. That each is a guarantor <coughs> for the other. Hmm. We want that from God, don't we? Oh God, I want you <coughs> to pledge that you are now responsible. I am your son, you are my papa. And because you're my papa, you got to take care of me. You got to supply my needs. You got to you got to help me be the head and not the tail and above and not beneath. You got to help me that greater he is than me than he is in the world and God's looking at you and saying, "But where's your responsibility to me?" And if you were jointly knit together, and I have called you to come knitly together and building the body, <coughs> perfecting you to be holy and bringing you into unity, where is your pledge to one another? Is this mine or is this Pastor Kenny's? Is this Pastor Kenny's? It's starting to turn red again. Can I have mine? Because apparently it's not coming out in the spirit from Pastor Kenny's. <coughs> People are not hearing it. It must be going into a, a worship mode or something. So when there's a leak in the roof, whose leak is it? Then why do you keep asking me to fix it? <laughs> Hallelujah! Oh, I felt the spirit jump on me. If, it's, if, it, if, if there's something's cracked in the foyer, whose foyer is cracked? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> if there's no paper towels in the bathroom, whose bathroom is without paper towels? Yours. <clears throat> Let me preach it, brother. You just sit still. I just can't get riled up. Someone call me down. Come wave stuff over your father. I'm just saying we need to understand that. Right? <clears throat> Pastor, the light bulb's out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for letting me know the light bulb's out. I get it. But you saw it first. So <clears throat> find the ladder, climb the ladder, go buy a dollar light bulb and put it in. I give my money. But it's still your light bulb. I give my money too. 
connected, equally connected. We need to take the responsibility, not only of each other, but what this house has to offer and what this house is doing in this community and how this house has made a difference. Listen, this house has made a difference not only here, but in Harrisonburg and Benin and, and Togo and Ghana and Cameroon and Ukraine and Israel. We have gone more places than any other church that I know of that's just a small. We have altered people's lives and changed people's lives <clears throat> because we are willing to what? Stand connected because we can't do it all by ourselves. And you have to feel the connection. You have to feel the responsibility. You have to understand what that says. It refer It refers to the fact that every individual pledges responsibility to one another that each is a guarantor for the other. Every one of you that's a parent, you understand it. You didn't give birth to your child. And then when they came out, you said, now, there's a refrigerator, there's the closet, there's the bed, and the food, food line and the Walmart's where you buy your food. I did my part. No, no, you have a sense of <coughs> responsibility. They are what? Yours, Right? It's your house, it's your, it's your refrigerator, it's your children, it's your wife, it's your husband, it's your chickens. <coughs> Listen, in other words, upon what basis do we receive a favorable judgment? It's based on our unity. It's only based on our unity. How does... How does the oil flow down from the head, across the beard, across the shoulders, down across the hips, and down and put on the ground? <clears throat> Brethren, dwell together in what? Unity. Unity pours the oil out. Unity. Each of us has some positive quality that is unique to him or her. You have something to offer God. You have something not only to offer God, but you have something to offer this house. Every individual is uniquely needed and indispensable. Now listen, you might not do your job and God might someone to, uh, send someone to do your job, but he wanted you to do the job. So though that job is being taken care of, it's not been taken care of the way that you could have done it. So by standing together, <clears throat> here we go, I like this. Now you may do it again. Hello, there you go. Don't be afraid, brother. By standing together in a way that emphasizes our complete, <coughs> say that word. Listen, I just live my life the way I want to live it because I am dependent upon anyone. I, oh, I do am independent upon God. But when after that, I am just responsible for me. Well, that's a lie. That's not even biblical. Because God said, if you love God and hate your brother, you actually hate me. Hello? So you can't bypass the connection. So what he's saying is, <coughs> when you stand together, in a way it emphasizes our complete interdependence, we surrender our personal identities and redefine ourselves as a part of a greater unified whole. You're not just the person who attends here. You are here. You're not just the one who came here. You are Lion of Judah. You have changed and surrendered your personal identity. You have redefined yourself as part of the greater whole. <coughs> wow! Scary, isn't it? Because none of you are just you passed out. When you came to know Yeshua, are you still you or are you what he wants you to be? Well, then you changed your personal responsibility, right? You've changed your personal identity. We, we served God as a, as a traditional Christian Pentecostal church for years, right? 20 years. <clears throat> came on Sunday, came back on Sunday night, right? We all came on Sunday. Only the saved ones came back on Sunday night. The remnant came on Wednesday. The rest of you, we were just hoping you'd make it when he came. So thank God he didn't come yet. That's who our identity was. We were Pentecostal. You came in, you knew we were Pentecostal. You knew that you could come on Sunday. You knew that you came, came on Sunday night. You knew that Wednesday night was the time that we <coughs> preached the, the gospel and, and had Bible study. But guess what? That was your personal identity. How many has had their personal identity changed? 
Now you're what? Now you're Messianic, Pentecostal, but Messianic. Now you don't worship on Sunday anymore, you worship on Saturday. Now you have feasts, now you wear Z feasts, now you wear prayer shows. Now you, sometimes you wear kippahs, and now you come in, and you're going to have a festival, and now you're going to worship, you're going to have a shofar blown. You have changed your identity. Hallelujah. You have redefined yourself as part of a greater whole. You do it all the time. If you ever gotten married, you start to change your personality. I mean, personal identity. Sometimes your personality. You're no longer known as the single one. You're known as the married one, right? So now when the person comes up to you and says, <clears throat> they used to say when you're single, let's go to the movies. Now they say, can you go to the movies? it will be all right with your wife and go to the movies? Because your personal identity has been changed, right? Before, you didn't have to ask anyone, right? People knew that, correct? Byron, take the chicken off the line. <laughs> Redefine yourselves. We each have our own strengths, correct? And we each have our own weaknesses. Don't look around. We have our weaknesses. We have our successes, and we have our failures. But our victory depends on the fellowship and our union. And when we are equally <coughs> connected, standing side by side, when my weakness comes to the forefront, <coughs> your strength covers me. If I can't reach something, someone comes behind me to get it. If I can't carry something, someone comes and says, I'll get it. Right? Sometimes you're strong and sometimes you're weak and sometimes you're successful and sometimes you're not. So in a group, individual shortcomings fall away and all that is left <coughs> are the unique strengths that we bring to the whole body. All of you have siblings, and I said this last night, everyone knows in your siblings which ones are strong and which ones are weak. You know which ones are silent, which ones are mouthy. You know which ones are calm and cool and which ones will <sighs> explode like a hand grenade. You know it. Listen, as a lone individual, we could never overcome this life. We could never live useful and happy lives. But together we stand as a testimony to the fact that there is strength in unity. <clears throat> together we are a whole that is greater than the sum of its parts. Which is why he tells us some of you are a finger, some of you are a hand, some of you are a knee, some of you are a leg, some of you are an ear, some of you are a nose. But when I look at you, you are a body because each part making up the body and what the ear can do it does well but what the ear can't do something else takes place right <clears throat> the can can hear what needs to be heard and the ear can't pick up what needs to be picked up so what the strength of the ear also has weaknesses and so that has to work together listen what he said in deuteronomy chapter 29 today you are standing what all of you before adonai your god and then he tells you who it is from the head to the one who chops the wood to the one who draws the water. That all of us might enter into that <coughs> covenant, taking that responsibility. So this path of life is one of unity. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 30, 15 through 19. I'm <coughs> going to close here in five minutes, I promise you. In the Lord's time. Look, I am presenting you today with, on the one hand, what? Life and good. How many know that life is good? Good is life. And on the other hand, death and evil. In that I am ordering you today to love Adonai your God, to follow his ways and to obey his mitzvahs, regulations, and rulings. For if you do, you will live and increase your numbers. And Adonai your God will bless you in the land you are entering in in order to take possession of it. He's already telling you, <clears throat> this is the one option. This is the other option. This is the option to take. Whew, here it is. That's why when we started entering as a daycare, we have a business as a daycare. They count on the daycare being open. But <clears throat> what, two years ago, maybe three years ago, I decided, no, when the fast days and the, and the festivals come, that daycare has to be shut down. We cannot worship God and not follow <clears throat> what God tells us to do as a corporate body, as a business. And if we lose people, what? 
we lose people because we must be obedient to Adonai. But if your heart turns away, if you refuse to listen, <coughs> if you're drawn away to prostrate yourselves before other gods and serve them, and you say, I don't have other gods, I don't serve other gods, here's your other god, the world in you, what you want, that's your god. I'm announcing to you today that you will certainly perish. You will not live long in the land you are crossing in the yard and to enter and possess. I call on heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have presented you with life and death, the blessing and the curse, and therefore choose life so that you will live and your descendants. What is Moses saying? He's saying that the path of Torah brings life and well-being. But there are two levels to this idea. And very quickly, the first level is this, that a person can see a variety of ways to live, and you're thinking through the possibilities and probabilities, and it seems to you <coughs> that a life that's guided by Torah is likely to be more profound level of happiness and fulfillment. We've come to that conclusion. We have said, if I follow Torah, my life is more fulfilled, and I have greater life in it. That's a decision you have made, that to follow him is great. So we choose the path of Torah, which is the path of life. And that's one level of choice. The other level of choice is when harmony is not apparent, which means <coughs> there is a crisis, there is opposition, there is a struggle. And one's lifestyle of following Torah or just being at LOJ leads to extra problems. It's not so much today, but <coughs> when we first started out, if you all remember, if you've been around, uh, Sharon Miles was around, other people were around, Pastor Kenny was around, just to come to Line of Judah made people's eyes raise. What? You could say you're a Baptist, you could say you went to the Methodist Church, you could say you went to Catholic Church, and they would just say, oh. But when you said you went to Line of Judah, they, they went pale. <laughs> Where? Because of all the rumors and all the things and all the attacks of the enemy that had come against us when we first started. All of those attacks. So <coughs> sometimes your decision causes crisis. Opposition. But it's in this challenging situation that each have the power to choose the path of life in goodness. even though it might well seem a choice which is higher than conventional reasoning and understanding. And all of you who have decided to follow Torah, decided that the Sabbath is Saturday, and decided to follow the festivals, you already understand and know that people look at you and say, why? What's wrong with you? They will say things, isn't the grace of God enough? Why bother? That's a lot of work. Why, <coughs> why don't you just take the easy way? Be under grace. We are under grace, which they don't understand. But we have chosen life. We have chosen Torah. We have chosen his instructions because it's based on a wider perception of who we are and where we are going. And this life and this road as adverse conditions as it can create with your family, with your siblings, <coughs> with your neighbors, with your friends, <coughs> with other Christians who don't get you, right? There's no other road. There's no other road for me. We said it when we started this journey. There's no other. We cannot turn back. There's just no way. Can't do it. The reason why we won't turn back, the reason why there's no other road, is because we are concerned about what reality really is, not just what seems good at the moment, but what really is good. Because the world just wants someone who will tickle their ears, speak to them what they want to hear, make them feel good while they're here. <coughs> I don't mind making you feel good, but I also want to shake you. I also want to... to make you think and, and, and prod your heart, pick at your heart and, and get you to think about some realities of life. <coughs> you need to choose life. Listen, you just have two choices in life, basically. You will either choose life or you will choose death. 
what's exciting about what's going to be happening tomorrow at Rosh Hashanah, Yom Torah, Feast of Trumpets, whichever one you want to call it, is that we will stand before him in this festival. And what this festival is all about is that we will say to him, I dedicate myself to you, Elohim, my king. That's what we will say. <clears throat> this brand new year, I dedicate myself again. Old things pass away. Behold, all things become new. I rededicate myself and dedicate my life to you. But in, in turn, he then looks at us and chooses us anew. And what he says to us is, I have forgiven everything. I am your father. You are my child. This cyclical thing that is going to happen tomorrow is that I'm going to stand before him and rededicate, and he's going to stand before me and actually dedicate himself to me. Where can you find that? It's up to us. Look, I'm closing. It's up to us to try to bring consistency to our lives. To make our outward behavior a reflection of the love hidden in our hearts. I told Lana Judah too <coughs> yesterday that if I want tomato soup and a grilled cheese sandwich, which I like. Gail does not make the tomato soup the way she likes it. She does not make the grilled cheese the way that she likes it. Her hidden love for me will be manifested in that outward behavior. I don't have to tell her how I like it. She already knows how I like it. If there's Lebanon bologna, she's going to put cheese, then Lebanon bologna, then cheese, and some onion. Then she's going to fry that thing and it's going to melt all over the place. She's going to put milk in that tomato soup with a lot of pepper. Because I like it, a lot of pepper. She's going to put it in a soup bowl because I like the soup bowl. The mug type of thing. She's going to put crackers on the side. Before she does, she's going to ask me whether I want butter in the tomato soup or on the crackers. And I will probably say to her, both. I just got to keep you on your toes, sister. <laughs> and when that comes in and it's cut and that diagonal, <clears throat> that cheese gushes out. So I pick up that one part of the sandwich and I dunk it in that pepper-filled tomato soup with milk and eat it. I'm not eating just tomato soup with grilled cheese, lemon on bologna, and onion. I'm eating the hidden love that she has for me, that she has manifested in an outward behavior. Because she could have said, the tomato soup is in the closet. <laughs> the bologna and the cheese is in there also, in the refrigerator, and the knife is there. She could have said, <coughs> here's a cheese sandwich the way I like it. But she didn't. See, my whole life now is dedicated that my outward behavior exhibits my hidden love for my Yeshua. And he's already given me what he wants. So therefore, all I got to do is accommodate him. What does he want me on Sabbath? Here. What does he want me to do in the festivals? Celebrate him. How does he want me to be connected to you? Equally connected. Personal responsibility and a guarantor of your life. That's all he ask. Because if you love me, you'll keep my commands. You can't say you love me and then hate your brother. <coughs> because the greatest two commandments, from the 613 down to the 10, down to the 2, is very simple. How you love him and how you love one another. You can't get rid of the connection. You can't get rid of it. So you say you love me, and I say I love you. Then what outward behaviors do we exhibit to bring that love out to one another. Tomato soup and grilled cheeses. <laughs> I expect it tomorrow. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Amen?
Turn to someone and just say, listen, I'm connected to you. <coughs> and you might even say, whether you like it or not, I'm connected to you. Everyone look at Heidi. She's looking around, but no one's over there. <laughs> Heidi, we're connected to you. <coughs> Amen? Amen? Amen. Let's stand before Adonai. Children, come. I'm connected to you. That's beautiful. <coughs> church, come on. If we're connected to these children, everyone in the church come and hold a part of this prayer shawl. Hallelujah. All the children are coming. Hallelujah. Just grab a, grab a part of the prayer shawl. If you can't, just elbow someone on the side and tell them to move over. Our children need to feel that as we as adults, we appreciate them and pray for them. <coughs> Father, in the name of Yeshua. I come before you with these children, every male, every female, everyone that represents a Sarah, a Rachel, a Leah, a Rebecca, Ephraim, Manasseh, Joseph, Peter, Paul, a Lydia, a Esther. Father, even those that represent a pastor, a teacher, a rabbi, a prophet, <coughs> a missionary. Father, I ask that your anointing, the glory of your Shekinah on this prayer shawl, Father, will hover over them and watch them and lead them and guide them and direct them. Father, if they have not already, bring them to the saving knowledge of you as Savior. Let them accept Yeshua HaMashiach. Father, draw them in the deeper depths. Father, in this last day, which we know are evil and we know things are happening, I ask God that the spirit of Elijah rest upon them. That the word of the Lord will be upon their mouth and that they will... Go where you want them to go, and their hands will do what you want them to do. Father, Lord, that you will call such a spirit of revival within them. <clears throat> they will change the generation. Let them surpass us, Father. Let them know your word. Let them hear you. Father, let them prophesy. Let them, let them speak truth, Father, Lord God. Just let them be a witness and a light to this generation and to theirs. Bless them. Anoint them. Keep them. Watch over them. Father, in this new year that's coming, Father, we dedicate our lives to them. They are a heritage unto you, and they are given to us as stewards. So, Father, let us take that wisely and re hold on to that responsibility. <clears throat> let our outward behaviors be a symbol of our inward love for them. Father, change us, shift us. Father, even as we're all gathered together, children in the middle, and we're all holding a prayer shawl or somewhere near. Father, knit us together. Father, boards equally connected. <clears throat> Let unity flow in this place that your power might flow with it. So take them, use them for your kingdom and for your glory, and for that we'll give you praise. In the name above every name, Hashem, Yeshua, HaMashiach, we pray. Amen. Where you're at, just lift your hands, children and adults. If you're not holding the prayer shawl, you got one hand. Lift your hands to receive the priestly blessing.
Yahweh, he who exists, kneel before you presenting gifts, will guard you with a hedge of protection. Yahweh, he who exists, will illuminate the wholeness of his being towards you, <coughs> bringing order. He will provide you with love, sustenance, and friendship. Yahweh, he who exists, will lift up wholeness of being and look upon you. He will set in place all you need to be, whole and complete. May Yahweh grant all the desires of our hearts, fulfill all our purposes and all our petitions. May Yahweh hear from heaven, quickly answer all our requests, and save us in the day of adversity. And in the name of Yeshua the Messiah, defend us from our enemies, from poverty and from bondage. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. See you all in the fellowship hall for some good eating. <clears throat> Bring back the tray of chicken I took away.